Well, hi, Glenn. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> I'm excited to hear um, the continuation, the theory of everything. Yeah, today uh, we're going to, among other things, as we meander through the theory of everything, uh, the thing that I intend to cover is, is regulation, which is uh, in the energy work that uh, has led to this theory, uh, one of the important overviews that we look at that helps us to understand how a person may respond to a given therapy when we're healing. You know, we're introducing new stimuli, new chemistry, new energy, new information, new patterning into the, the human system. And we all have unique ways of being, ways of responding, unique challenges or, or, or uh, you know, toxic deposits or things that may be activated. And so uh, regulation gives us kind of a predictor of, of what may be happening so that we can give people a heads up uh, if they're in, especially if they're in the lower levels of regulation. So I've divided it like the other areas into five levels of regulation. The lowest level of regulation I call blocked regulation. That's where something is blocked in the body's physiological pathways. And the body, physiology, which is function of the body, is divided into many, many different feedback loops. In, in science they're called negative feedback loops because the negative implies that if there's a change, the feedback loop, there's a series of other changes that come back around to, to reverse that negative change, to, to make it positive if it started out negative. If it started out as a positive change, it'll come back and reduce it and make it negative. So it brings it back to balance, like blood pressure. Mm -hmm. If our blood pressure uh, goes up, there's systems that will bring it back down to normal. And if that system is not working, maybe our blood pressure goes high and it just stays high no matter what, well that shows a blocked regulation. It's not working as it should. Maybe the sympathetic nervous system, the fight or flight or fright stress system is jammed on. We live in a culture where there's so many stresses and our system is designed to have a stress reaction to give us more energy to, you know, to take care of that that danger, that, that saber-toothed tiger, that uh, you know, oh, some some acute risk of injury. Uh, our our blood vessels contract so that if we get injured in that in that dangerous situation, we won't bleed to death as easily. But if we're doing in that reaction all the time, now we're creating other problems. Our body's not really well designed to handle. And so, uh, if we're in blocked regulation. It's one thing to say the blood pressure is high and stays high and won't go down and there's blocked regulation. It's another thing to say that the solution, in, in medicine we, we don't have a, typically, uh, clinically, a good solution for that. We have management. We say, well, that, you're going to blow a gasket. You may, you know, have a stroke. Uh, an aneurysm may burst. So, so we want to bring the pressure down to, so we don't risk those other sequelae or later uh, effects that would be caused by the blood pressure itself. But what we really want to do in terms of healing is go back to the cause of the high blood pressure. In this case, we're saying it's blocked regulation. Well, there's a reason for that. Some, something that doesn't belong in the body, usually a toxin, is blocking a pathway, one of those loops of regulation, a negative mm -hmm. feedback loop. And we want to restore the integrity of that loop, that homeostatic physiological regulatory pathway, by detoxifying by removing the block, removing the toxin. We could also be deficient in something that we need. Uh, magnesium is the most commonly deficient mineral in our culture. We don't add it to the soils because we can grow commodity foods without having magnesium in them. So why put magnesium? That would cost money. Well, in, in the past, all of our ancestors tended to put manure on the fields and that had magnesium, it recycled the magnesium. Uh, so magnesium helps with heart rhythm and blood pressure regulation and, and nerve function. It's a relaxing mineral. We're not getting enough. It's the most deficient. Mm -hmm. And yet it's one of the macro minerals, one that we need a lot of, like calcium. Magnesium is number two. Uh, so, so are we actually stripping our, our magnesium just by the amount of caffeine habits that people are having, like even increasing 
uh, caffeine in general is nutrient depleting and, and it overstimulates the energy production system, uh, adrenals, pancreas, and, and, and those, uh, I know in the pancreas the energy regulation uses the magnesium extensively and so there's, uh, there's a good likelihood that that would be true. I know we're, we're deficient primarily because it's just not in the, just not in the soils. We've lost maybe 90%, if I recall the numbers right, is 80 or 90% of the magnesium that was in our farm soils 100, 120 years ago, so based on soil samples in, in, that have been you know, held in, in museums and then researched later. We've lost it because we're not putting it back in. So yeah, we're deficient and, and overstimulating those systems with nutrient depleting things like refined sugar, caffeine, chocolate, stimulates those as well, but chocolate is interesting because it does have a very high level of magnesium, so at least it's helping to replete the magnesium, even though it probably is, as you're pointing out, with stimulants like caffeine, drawing on that, it's using it. Uh, the kidneys, the body has ways of keeping those important minerals in. In fact, there's only one mineral that we need for life that the kidneys don't have a mechanism for retaining, for concentrating out of the urine, for like keeping in, and that's chromium. Chromium is, we'll do a little detour about chromium because it's so important. Chromium also involves like sugar regulation, energy uh, metabolism. Uh, and in fact, just by replacing the chromium that we lose by having those energy stimulants like refined sugar that have the chromium refined out of them, we will live five years longer by taking like 200 micrograms about a tiny really? bit a day. Uh, the, the, the best form is that the body uses is uh, called GTF, stands for glucose tolerance factor chromium, so that's, I, I recommend that form. There's a couple other good forms that are well recommended. And when we test people individually, we can actually measure the body's reaction to each form and see if a particular form is, is the one that that body is able to utilize more efficiently. Yeah, yeah, usually you hear about chromium, chromium and um, relation to weight loss and dieting mm -hmm. to speed up the metabolism, but I've never heard of this in regards to the kidneys. Mm -hmm. Well, the kidneys are where we lose, mm -hmm. we, where the water goes out, right. right, the fluid, and so the, the minerals, it's the, our main mechanism for retaining our minerals. Those, those loops in the kidneys are an incredible system for, for alchemy, for concentrating one thing and, and letting another thing go. Mm -hmm. You know, keeping the good, taking out the bad. Um, yeah, chromium is the easiest mineral to lose in processing foods too. So that's the, really the, the, the source, the root source of the problem is that our foods are processed. We lose the chromium even before anything else, especially grains, we should get chromium in it, and wheat germ, etc. but we, we're eating white flour and the chromium is gone. Uh, so yeah, even in, in making whole wheat flour, you tend to lose chromium before uh, other things. B vitamins also, on the vitamin side, there's the B vitamins to heat, they're very sensitive. Uh, so, so block regulation now, if there's a deficiency of something we need, we certainly want to have that, and chromium would, could affect the blood pressure as well. Uh, or if there's something that doesn't belong in the body, a toxin, we've, we've produced 70,000 new chemicals that never existed for the, you know, the hundreds of millions of years of, of evolution of life, the, the hundreds of thousands of years of human life evolution, our genes have no clue what to do with those. It would, you know, from a genetic point of view, genetic evolution point of view, it would take lots and lots and lots of generations to, to make an adaptation to, to handle those kind of changes. Although, there's, there, we're starting to learn that there's other views of the, the genes that, that actually make them much more adaptive. It appears that Genetic, genetic adaptability is built in. Our, sis, our genetic system has the genetic capability to learn and adapt to new challenges much better than just having to wait for some random event in one person. It's like, oh, I need that, I need that genetic change, but you're the mutant who, who was born with it because some radioactive particle from another you know, solar system came in and, and created that one little change that happened not to be a deadly one, but a good one. And, and, but the rest of the population doesn't benefit from that. And our bodies are actually a lot smarter than the, the, the 
sort of still conventional view of genetics has held that, that it's just by random mutation. It's not. It's intelligent, an intelligent system designed to be adaptable to changes in the environment. We know from geological point of view that, that life has evolved in, a, in an earthly system where periodically there's radical changes. We can look, for example, at six, a 60, year, 60 million year cycle of uh, die-off of, of species with a, a, you know, a sudden change in the environment. And so with those changes in the Earth environment that happen periodically as we move around the Milky Way galaxy on a 240 million year cycle, right? Million, yeah. Uh, so that's, you know, we weren't humans <laughs> 240 million years ago, not even 60 million years ago. But our genetics, our precursors were here adapting to those changes. Mm -hmm. So we move around every 240 million years but there's an electrical, the arms of the galaxy, if you look at galaxies and you see those two spiral arms and we're in one of the outer part of one of those arms that's more lit up and there's stars throughout, but there's this bright band coming into the center from both sides. And that's where there's a higher activity, higher electrical current, and that electrical current moves around faster and that's the 60 million year cycle of, of die off. So we're in one of those right now where there's more rapid changes because there's more activity electrically going on in, in the galaxy. So, so anyway, we're finding out that our genes actually are much more adaptable than, than we thought. They're, you know, the, the idea has been that the genes are in charge, they're sitting there in the nucleus, it's like the central office and, and it's, a, you know, it's a hierarchical design where they're you know, the executive uh, branch of, of the government and they're saying here's the rules and we're gonna you know make this make this uh, enzyme make that enzyme uh, you know do this do that well I mean that's part of the story but but it, they don't do that in isolation the, the the cell membrane is is a huge part of the story that's missing from that view the cell membrane is is the front line that's that's you know that's the the sensors that's, that's the, if it was a, uh, a community, it's the people out there on the front lines, you know, first responders saying, hey, there's an issue here. And they relay that, and there's intracellular communication uh, that goes into the nucleus that, that informs the DNA what needs to be responded to. And so that's how we can change according to our environment. Uh, and, and so we're just learning, you know, 90% of the DNA is not just about which end, how to make an enzyme, but it's about the, what was called until just a couple of years ago, junk DNA, and now it's all about epigenetics and how that supposedly, formerly junk DNA is really intelligent and helps us to figure out how to use the rest of our Everything DNA. Everything has a purpose. Yeah, the it's appendix has a purpose, areas. it's not vestigial, <laughs> et cetera, yeah. And we're, we're learning. So when we think something is extra, then it's not an extra organ. It's doing something we don't know what it is yet. Um, yeah, so, so about the regulation, we want to remove the blockages. And that's a challenge because especially when you have a system that's supposed to function with all of its parts working, and now we're saying part of it's blocked. And we want to stimulate the system to have it work better than it has been in order to help remove the blockage. So the blockage can actually block the ability to remove the blockage. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like, ooh, it's a, it's a stumbling block. And so that means that sometimes, even though we may identify the blockage, we may know what the blockage is, maybe, maybe you know, a person had a, uh, a, a test to find out, uh, to take a, a, a chelation uh, agent to pull out heavy metals, and they tested the urine, 24-hour sample, and they said, yeah, we put in that chelator, and it pulled out heavy metals, so we know they're in there. But depending on how much there is and where it is, it may be blocking some of the systems. Often they'll get blocked, they'll jam up in the kidneys. So now the kidneys are blocked, and that's the way that your body has to eliminate the, the toxic metals as well as retain the good minerals. So the challenge with blocked regulation is it's like your car won't turn over. Well, how, maybe the battery's dead. We'll charge the battery. Well, I would if my car was running, it would be charging the battery. Uh, so it's a catch-22. Mm -hmm. And so when you do the right things for healing and your regulation is blocked, what happens? Maybe nothing, symptomatically. 
maybe for a while. Maybe you need to really, uh, you know, learn patience and perseverance on a spiritual level in order to overcome that blockage. Our tendency is to want to run to, you know, a quick fix, which, you know, and so there's times that that's essential to, say, take a, a medication that's toxic that works by blocking pathways, mm -hmm. creating further blockage, putting us actually in a lower level of health. Could you give us an example? Well, with, with blood pressure. Uh, there, there was a study actually in England that, that, that really showed, revealed this, where it's a rare kind of study, uh, which they studied the community and what the community thought about the person's health before and after using antihypertensive medications. And while all the doctors agreed that the, the patient population was healthier on the drugs because the, the pressure numbers were closer to a healthy person's numbers, it's still, it's only one measure, it doesn't mean that you're healthier. And that's the key we've mentioned before about your symptoms can go away whether you move toward health or toward deeper into disease, pushing things deeper mm -hmm. into the system like uh, a suppressive steroid cream can make the rash go away, but if you get asthma, that's not a good thing. Mm -hmm. That's worse than the rash. Something else is suffering. Yeah, yeah. it's pushing it deeper in the system into a more important system. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so what they found was all the, the, the priests and ministers, the family members, and the patients all agreed, they disagreed with the doctors, but they all agreed among themselves that most of those patients seemed and felt and acted less healthy, at less energy, they were less functional. So again, the real goal for healing, even if we need to use a drug as a temporary measure for management, as we call it in medicine, disease management, managing the blood pressure, to look at that as the lifelong solution really is not respecting the intelligence of the body. The wisdom of the body says we can heal that, and it may take time. It took time to get here, and if we do only good things that have the potential to help remove those blockages. For example, let's say it's a real deep situation, like the kidneys are in the deepest tissue layer that we've talked about. So if your kidneys have heavy metals in them, and, you're, and so they're blocked, regulation, and your heart's working over time trying to filter the blood and clean heavy metals out of the blood, it's, it's gonna raise the pressure. And we can take a beta blocker or something that will slow down the, the heart function by blocking its regulatory pathways to bring the pressure down. Again, that's a temporary measure that may be important if your pressures are you know, 180 or something. But, but we need to detoxify the heavy metals. And the kidneys are down, so we need to use an alternate pathway. Some can go out through the liver. We could take N-acetylcysteine is a wonderful precursor of glutathione that's our nat nat natural way of taking out mercury. And so that'll bypass the kidneys. We can do saunas. We can get ourselves to sweat. You know, we can uh, you know, go in the warm pond and sweat. We can work in the garden, maybe you know, in the shade and, or with a hat on to avoid the sun because the, the bright sun can make toxins more toxic. Like uh, one that was studied was, was margarine. It's not something that our genetics are adapted to. It's a synthetic, it's not a food. I, I like to say, to mock the, the, the uh,